Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Wednesday as you are listening to the show today. We are pre-recording on a Tuesday afternoon and Olivia, we are about as far from strolling Strasburg <laughs> as we have ever gone at this point, aren't we? <laughs> I was just thinking that. I'm like, oh, we got on such a good track last month and then now we're reverting back. Yeah, we're not even, or I'm not even in Strasburg. I am still at home. We are recording on the screen today. Olivia is at the office. Her guest is at the office. And it's going to be an interesting show because it's a little different than things that we've done before, but it's going to give people who live in Strasburg a peek behind the curtain at what happens when there's bad weather, at how things get done behind the scenes. Jay McKinley is with us. He is the director of public works for the town of Strasburg. So we're going to find out how he's a huge help to you too I would guess Olivia with all your events and things that you plan oh absolutely I rely so heavily on public works and they are a fantastic team and asset to us in community development so speaking of a fantastic team and uh wonderful person if you don't know that voice it's Olivia Hilton she is my director of community development and events for the town of Strasburg. I don't know if she's interim still. I don't care because she is my <laughs> permanent director of development. Jay, let me start with you. Olivia was telling me before we started recording, Public Works is the mothership for a bunch of other departments that do a ton of things that people may not even realize in the town of Strasburg. Yeah, that's right, Janet. Number one, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. The Public Works is really the umbrella that's over all your utilities, water, wastewater. The Public Works division itself encompasses a streets crew, a utility crew, mechanics, and an inspection crew. So we, we have a lot of different departments. We're definitely the largest department for the town of Strasburg, uh, employee-wise. I think we carry, uh, I'm going to say about 32 people underneath me to help you know, take care of the utilities and whatnot. So yeah, it's definitely all encompassing and we tend to pick up anything that any other department can handle. And you guys are guys on the street. You're the ones that aren't just clearing the snow, but you're putting up the banners and you're making sure the planter boxes are pretty. You're doing all of the things that make the town beautiful too. The interesting thing there, Dan, is you mentioned all the things you could see. We also do a lot of things under the ground that you can't see. We maintain the water distribution lines. We maintain the sewer collection lines, the pump stations, the distribution pumps to get the water to the houses, those type of things too. That's uh, not too many people think about those underground utilities that we rely on. I would guess there is a lot of misconceptions too about what you do, what you don't do, and where, because you are the town of Strasburg that is part of Shenandoah County, that is part of the state of Virginia. So when it comes to snowstorms like we just had, people don't always know who is supposed to be clearing what based on where it is. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, we only maintain the roads within the town of Strasburg, which is about 50 lane miles, I believe. So our crew is just dedicated to that. And you mentioned also, we, we only take care of the public spaces, though. We can't handle you know, private spaces, driveways, those type of things uh, in, in your residence. I could not even imagine. I'm in Middletown. I'm next door. But I would never expect anybody in Middletown to come and clear my driveway for me. That's my responsibility, I always assumed. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't feel that way. Uh, also, cars that get plowed in. I get uh, Today, for example, I'm getting a lot of calls about you know, my car is plowed in. Can you go move the scope around it? And unfortunately, we can't. Uh, there are just too many cars, not enough people. I do feel a little spoiled because my parking spot was cleared. This morning when I got to work, but that's because I work at the town office, so I can say thank you for cleaning my parking spot now. Oh, the town hall is a public space, so they're yes. <laughs> And I'll bet that's something else that confuses people too, because there are town public spaces. Like whenever I come to meet Olivia, when we're actually going to stroll, I always park at the town lot because it's just easier there at the town office. And there are a couple other public parking lots in the town, but for the most part, the rest of them are business parking lots that come with the property that businesses own that they're responsible for making sure are clear. That's correct. And, and one of the things we, we fight, too, is the people take these private spaces and they take the snow and they push it into the public road. So that creates a problem as well. So then we have to come back and clean that up as well. And I would guess sidewalks are always a point of contention among residents and business owners alike. Yeah, we actually have a town code that offers guidelines on, on the sidewalk. So we ask that residents 
clear their sidewalk within six hours of the next day at the end of the storm. And really, that's about safety. It's about people being able to stroll through Strasburg without hurting themselves. Look at him, Olivia. He has caught on so quick. Aren't you proud? So fast. <laughs> See, I love it. <laughs> so, Jay, are all of you guys in that department, like when the when we hit winter, are you like amateur meteorologists? Are all of you guys trying to predict the path of a snow and what's going to happen? And then what kind of logistics go in to being ready for whatever falls out of the sky? So logistics as far as preparing for the snowstorms uh, actually starts back in October. When we start uh, you know, getting our equipment out, checking the, the spreaders, uh, the snow plows, making sure everything hooks up, all the hydraulics work right, the electrical, there's just so much that goes into one of those trucks, one of those plow trucks. So we've got a mechanics just on that from October on, making sure everything's ready. And unfortunately, every time that first couple of storms, we shake out that equipment, transmission line blow. We've got three trucks in the garage right now just from that last snow. Wow. Yes. And also the materials, you know, we've got to make sure we have a, a good stockpile of salt on hand, chips, a retraction, those type of things. So yeah, the prep really starts early on. But like you said, when it comes to storms too, we, we keep our ear to the ground. We try to you know, get as many weather reports in as we can to try to base when to bring the crews in and start staging the, the personnel and the equipment to be ready for that storm. I've done a couple of snow shows with VDOT. They've come and done the show with me. Uh, a lot of times it's Ed from over in Edinburgh. And they talk about how positioning people and making sure they have them trained, how sometimes they have to use outside contractors. I would imagine that you work with them a lot to figure out, okay, this is how they do it. So this is where we go to make sure that you're covering different areas and not stepping all over each other. That's a good point uh, because VDOT actually maintains the thoroughfares 11 and 55 through town, and we maintain all the side streets. So we don't really step on each other's toes too much, but we do look to VDOT as far as, you know, if they're staging equipment, then, you know, we're starting to check weather forecasts to figure out why. The one, one big difference with VDOT is they have a lot more lane miles to cover, whereas we're fairly concentrated, and we can stage everything out of one spot, our, our public works building, whereas they need to go ahead and put equipment out on the interstate sitting ready to go uh, because they don't want to give up that travel time just get you know, that equipment out there once it starts snowing and when we're talking about the town of Strasburg, i think of the town of Strasburg as when i get to the mcdonald's until i get up past the old mill and then once i'm there on rat 11 heading into woodstock i don't think about it being Strasburg. how far when you're talking about your 50 miles how far is that where the town itself is concerned well, you actually you described two two of the three entrances with our you know welcome to Strasburg sign three actually the other one going towards front royal out uh, at about where the uh, garage is uh, we have another welcome to Strasburg sign so that's about the, uh, the, the circumference of the, the town of Strasburg. I think it's, and don't quote me on this, I think it's only about two and a half square miles. You got a lot packed yeah. into two and a half square miles. There's a lot of roads. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of roads and homes packed into that area. Olivia, how great is it being able to have him in the same building as you when you're planning these events and you're going to need to lean on them so much? Oh, it's a huge help. It really is. We've talked about shifting my office over to the visitor center, or of course they have their public works building. And I'm always an advocate for keeping us all in one hub. I got one wall I can knock on as the chief's wall and the other one's Jay's down the hall. So it really comes in handy. And he really is also so much institutional knowledge that I rely on because Jay's been here through so many large projects as the project manager. We just finished up our a streetscape project, which I want to say was a solid 10 years long. And so he actually saw that from soup to nuts beginning to end. And so the square that I get to program, he was here when it was a pile of dirt. It's really wonderful to have him on site. And of course, overseeing the parks and the pool, that pool has enough of its own stories that we could probably write a side, a little side book with. So it's definitely nice when he's able to give some knowledge of when this thing broke or when that thing broke and when we tried that and this worked. So it's been really exciting to work with him. And we, of course, have our master park plan that was approved by council. It's our 15-year plan that we've been working on as an implementation team 
So uh, anytime I can talk dirt and mud and pickleball, I'm happy. So Jay is definitely a, an asset for me specifically. You are so easy, dirt, mud, and pickleball. That's all you're <laughs> yep. really worried about. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk about some of those things because yes, the streetscape is beautiful. I'm sure a lot of people 10 years ago didn't really picture how great it was going to look when it was over. And Jay, I would also imagine that it probably felt like 100 years, not 10 years getting that project That's start to right. finish. So can we talk about some of those things, parks and that sort of stuff when we come back in the next segment? Certainly. We're going to take a quick break. We are pre-recording on a Tuesday afternoon. We are not at Nancy's Coffee Bar. We are not strolling the streets of Strasburg. Olivia is in Strasburg. I am still in Middletown. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about all of the really cool stuff that you may not know that the Department of Public Works for the town of Strasburg does. Jay McKinley is on the screen pre-recording with us today. He is their director along with Olivia Hilton. She is my director of community development for the town of Strasburg. We're going to talk more with both of them in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? You've come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees, or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming, and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Wednesday. As you are listening to the show today, we are recording on a Tuesday afternoon, a melting Tuesday afternoon. We are not strolling Strasburg, but Strasburg is still in our hearts and in our minds. Olivia Hilton is my interim. She is my director of <laughs> community development for the town of Strasburg. Joining her is Jay McKinley. He is the actual director of public works for the town. We're, we're not strolling today because of weather and all kinds of other factors, but it's been an interesting conversation, Jay, because right before we went to break, Olivia rattled off this list of projects that I think sometimes once projects are finished, we forget about them. Doug Stanley, my favorite former county administrator in Warren County, we talked for so long about the bridges and when were the bridges going to be done and after they were finished, we stopped talking about them and it seemed like they had always been there. Do you find that's the same kind of thing that happens, especially with something like the streetscapes project, which is beautiful now. And I remember what it was like before. Yeah, certainly. I think that's human nature. It's once uh, something gets built and we accept it and we're just going to move on with our lives. The streetscape was done in three phases over a course of about 12 years. So definitely when phase one was completed, that all got accepted. Then we, you know, several years later, we got to phase two, and then a little more quickly to phase three. So definitely once the project's completed, it's, it becomes the new normal. And I've seen a lot of the bigger projects, uh, more expensive projects, like the water and wastewater facility upgrades we've done in the past. They're, I think we've got about 10 years on the water plant and six on the wastewater plant. Again, that just becomes the new standard. With the streetscape project, because you did it in three phases, people were able to see at the end of phase one, oh, this is what it's going to look like all the way down the street. And it was a little bit easier moving forward. You didn't have maybe there are always going to be people. There are always, I'm usually one of them, but there are always going to be people that complain about how long something's taking or what it looks like in the middle. But having that first segment done, that had to have been great to be able to give people a visual of what they could expect when the other two phases were finished. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that because you, you get to see the end product and that's what's going to get applied to phases two and three. Now, one of the interesting things about a project taking that long, which isn't unusual for this type of project, is that regulations can change. From phases one to two to three, the ADA requirements change, which meant we had to step back and do some redesigning, which did make it look a little bit different from one phase to the other, but still, 
again, the point being is that as time passes, regulations change, and you have to adjust on the fly. So I watch a lot of HGTV. So I am watching a lot of these love it or list it, and they're going to go in and flip these houses and they think it's going to be this and it's going to cost them this much and take this much time. And then they rip open the walls and find out there's a nightmare problem. How much of that with the Streetscape project, did you guys really know what you were in for? And were there any surprises aside from regulation changes that popped up between phase one and phase three? Phase three was a good example of you could plan for the things above the ground, like you put in sidewalk lights, uh, light poles, those type of things, no problem. But if you're replacing utilities, which is, we did before we started the project, we didn't want to put new asphalt and sidewalks on top of bad utilities. So part of the project was replacing all that underground material, pipes, water, sewer, uh, gas, uh, anything else in the area before we did all the work on top. And that's where you get into trouble is because you all you have is records of what might be in the ground. It's not until you open the ground up that you actually find out, oh, okay, that's not a 10 inch, it's an eight inch. Or, you know, that sewer line doesn't run here, it runs 300 yards over this way. So we definitely had to deal with a lot of that. But once you kind of get up out of the ground and, and build on top of the ground, it's pretty straightforward. And that's where people 50, 100, 200 years from now are going to be so grateful because you didn't have the luxury of really good records like people years from now we'll have because you'll have all of that documented and they will know exactly where what is and why it was put there that way. Yeah, that's a good point too is unfortunately we didn't have a lot of that documentation of you know water and sewer lines that went in the ground in probably the 30s, 40s, 50s. But since we did do the project and nowadays we have GPS points. So you know we we locate them and put them into a database so that now we can pull it up on the computer screen and say right here's exactly where that line runs. Olivia, when we went to break, you were talking about the new parks plan. I'm sure having all of that stuff is going to be huge for you planning events and doing more things that bring the Strasburg people to the parks, but also bring people in from around the area and tourists from out of the area to enjoy things that are there. Oh, absolutely. This is a game changer as far as I'm concerned for our parks and rec, because we have a beautiful town park and it's definitely underutilized. So this 15-year plan really breaks it down pretty much by five-year increments. So we can take what our goal is for this five-year piece of the plan and then look at what we think is doable financially, manpower-wise, capacity, and try to organize things. Last year, a big project was adding the two pickleball courts, which I was not at all biased. It was on the five-year chunk. It just might have gotten a little bit closer to the base based on passion. But, you know, it also included adding some ADA Uh, parking spaces and crosswalks. And then we have our new ADA playground swings that went in. So we had a lot of those changes. As Jay was mentioning, ADA has become much more of a focus. And of course, accessibility is important to us in the town. So adding those pieces jumped really to the top of the park plan. And so this next year, we're looking at putting in new volleyball courts, adding an AED. The park actually, it even includes changing locations of some of our bigger pieces, like our basketball courts. So it shifts them to make more sense with the parking spots and the pavilions. And it has some pretty big changes that are going to come down the pike. So we're doing as many little projects as we can now to try to make that impact look like we're really chipping away at it. So of course, with the long-term goal of adding a skate park, because Front Royals is beautiful and we are jealous. So that hopefully will come down as well. But even things like fixing some of the drainage and the fencing and the the dog park, just things that might seem small, but they need to be added to the to-do list is all roped into our master park plan. So yeah, we're just chugging away at it. And it's only on year two, I want to say, of approval. So we're really right at the beginning of prioritizing what we want to change and enhance in the park. And that's where too, Jay, I think sometimes public works plays a pretty big role because it's easy for any of us on the outside to say, how come they don't have more water fountains or how come there isn't more access to electricity in different public spaces? Those are things that we think are no brainers, but you guys really have to get in the weeds and figure out what would be the logistics of that and how's it going to be maintained. You're really the keepers of all of the hidden stuff that we think should just magically appear as citizens. He made a good point there, especially with you know electrical and water access. Uh, unfortunately, our park is not built out very well to handle those, and, and that's really a function of the fact that we didn't start out with a master park plan. We would have started out with a, just an open field of nothing. We would have planned a lot better. It happened organically once we bought the pool off of a private individual back in the late 80s. From there, we just started adding components on as time and money allowed. So it's a good thing we've come back now and taken a more holistic overview 
and look at the park and said, okay, now we can shuffle these elements around. But you're right, um, it, it does require maintenance on all these elements, the, the pool itself. I don't think most people realize how much work goes in to, to maintain the pool. Absolutely. And I have to lot. give, <laughs> yes, I have to give our, we have an aquatic and recreation pool manager, Danny Lee, a shout out because she was really our guinea pig. We now keep our pool filled with water year round. So she handles it and balances the chemicals and keeps it afloat, which has saved us time, saved us money. And then of course, we don't have to worry about the drainage of the pool. So Danny has been doing a really good job down there and she's helped to really push, especially the playgrounds. She got that going. We we're, we're excited to add on that position. So her position was new for a part-time year round, but it's, it just goes back to how we want to focus on our parks because it's such an asset for the quality of life here. And Olivia, when we talk about all the different events that you do from the grilled cheese and tomato soup festival to vintage in the Valley, the, all the parades, all of the things that you put together to make Strasburg be this really fun place to come and visit or spend time at you mentioned before we started recording about, and I'm going to call them the hidden heroes because we don't often see them as event attendees. The guys who are empty in the trash cans, the guys who are making sure that everything stays running smoothly. Almost all of them are in the public works department and we don't even know who they are. Absolutely. There's a specific team here in public works that it's more of our streets crew. So it's the guys who you will see kind of scurrying around, but they're the first ones to come on a Friday afternoon and just check in and say the barricades are posted. You have everything. We've, we've run the electrical cord through the culvert in the park because we have to get creative with connecting everything. And so, yeah, these guys are, are so helpful to me. I always rely on our, our public works and our PD because they're the ones who come in 2 a.m. and they're moving the cones so that no one parks there the next day or whatever it might be. I'm really appreciative of them, and I don't think I could even say it enough. So half the time I'm sliding them cookies or extra thank yous or yelling out of my car as I drive by and I'm putting up the banner downtown. No, please don't hate me. Usually I yell it out the car. They're just, they really keep everything running. And I know that Jay gets this all the time. Of, of People will bring up something that is very visible, but maybe lower on the scale of importance, but we have to balance showing the community that we're out there draining a field or putting up the banners because that's what they see. They don't see all of the important work that the guys do under the ground. Um, so it's trying to find that balance of, of making sure that they're seen and that the community is able to see all the positive that they're doing. They're doing 80% of the things that no one's ever going to know about, but it keeps their water clean and it keeps, it keeps the town going. I get to hit the guys more when they're doing that 20% that everyone sees, but it's such a big impact as well. So it's just balancing that. And I can never pretend to understand all that they do. So I just continue to thank them for all the pieces that I see that directly correlate to the parks and to the vents because it really keeps it keeps it going and it keeps my hands out of the trash can. So that sounds really extra great to me. Yeah, that that would be, that's the five star for me. So Jay, if somebody is listening, are you hiring? Or do you need people to come and help you that Olivia can bake cookies for in the future? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we are. We have several positions open on, on different crews in public works. This is a, it, it's a good field for somebody that's not college bound and wants to make a career with the town. And I would imagine a lot of it's outside. So if you enjoy being outdoors, this would be a, a good fit for you. It certainly is. And if you like running equipment, digging in the ground, uh, this is the place for you. Hey, Olivia, I just thought of a strolling Strasburg for summer. I think I should team up with Jay and get to run like the backos or the big <laughs> ditch digger things. And we should do a whole series on me and large equipment. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we can arrange that for you. <laughs> we might, Are, might even put you in a plow truck. See, I, now that would be because, yeah, I don't even drive my own car when the weather gets bad. But I feel like that I joked with my husband at one point that maybe a Hummer was the vehicle I should own if he ever expected me to leave the house once snow started falling. But I feel like, yeah, maybe a plow truck would be the best option for me to be on the roads in. I'm going to get my hands on that Kubota they have over there at Public Works. I, I at every 4th of July or event, I'm like, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> He's changing all the locks on all that stuff now, Olivia. You know that. As soon as we're done here, he's going to run over and change all the locks. Jay, are those job openings on the town of Strasburg's website? Yeah, you can go to strasburgva.com and, and grab an application there and email it back. Attention me or anybody else in town and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Fantastic. Thank you both for taking some time to chat with me today. Olivia, we're always coming up with new ways to introduce people to what's happening in Strasburg. I love it. I just want to share this beautiful community with everyone everyone listening. And I understand next month when we come back, uh, we're actually, knock wood, we're going to do it in person. We're going to be talking about Cupid's Market that's happening right before Valentine's Day. 
Yes, and only a couple spots left. So if anybody wants in. Now is the get, time. Get it. Now's the time. Okay. Thank you both. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you so much, Janet. As I always. will be back tomorrow. I will have a brand new episode of The Valley Today ready to go for you. It is Community Health Day, so we are going to be talking about the metabolic and bariatric services that Valley Health offers. So meet me back here for that conversation just a few minutes after noon.